locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. And you will never forget the name of Goldas. Well, New Year, and uh, you're still off with those. Hey, <laughs> whatever, wise nice guy. Nice to see some things never change. I'm telling you, welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling. I am the Duke, and yes, I do enjoy doing pro wrestling impersonations, and I'm going to keep on doing them no matter what my illustrious co-host, the Boston bad boy, Iron Mike Pelosi, says. Right, I'm going to give you a real impression here. Okay, ready? This sure. Is You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. What is going on right now? Okay. Master Wayne. Oh, we've got a new Batmobile. Master Wayne. Mm. It's right. Michael Caine. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> All right. Maddie B., uh, don't listen to this She guy, was just please. 15 years old. Oh, jeez. Shout out to Maddie B., Karen L. Shout out to the whole uh, British crew out there. I don't know what's going on with this guy. Don't please. throw them spears at me. All right. That's enough of this guy. Listen. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to uh, 2017, the first Duke Loves Wrestling episode of 2017. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully it gets better from here on out because, you know, we don't know what the hell we're doing. Well, it's true. It's very true. Listen, I, I got to go off the rails for a second here. Right, here we go. <clears throat> so soon into 2017. Yeah, well, how, why am know, I not surprised? This isn't necessarily wrestling related, but I just got to bring something up. Because yeah. we were having a big discussion today uh, <laughs> over the concept of when someone opens the door... They hold the door for you, right? Okay. If if the other person walks through the door, yep. Do you get upset if they every don't say time. thank you every are you, time? Are you I knew me? you were going with this. Are and you yes, kidding Every me? time uh, you get upset if somebody does, if, uh, if, if somebody doesn't say thank you to you. Holding the door, yeah, is a morality test. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> now I limit my door holding to people who, right? Uh, like the elderly who seem like they might actually need a physical hand opening the oh, door. Okay. Ageism. Okay. Age, I, right. Huh. T totally. Yeah, because they not really somebody need hand? you, right? Oh, okay. No, but like yeah. I'm not going to purposely hurry up like I do a lot of times to not be... I, I hurry up so there's no intercept at the door. <laughs> so I either get clearly through the door without having to hold the door or I, I lag behind so that they don't hold the door for me because a lot of people... There's, there's two sides to this. You really thought this out. Oh, yeah, so, because okay. I hold the door for yeah. spite. Okay. Because most people... Do not say thank you. Bingo. And, and, and why should you? Listen, if you're holding listen. the door looking for a thank you, then your your whole no, 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 concept no. is no not pure. No one's looking for okay. a thank you. No one's looking for a thank you. A thank you is the language we no. speak of polite society. No, you're if And you're, here's the thing. When I hold the door and somebody says thank you, I say you're welcome. I, always put, I don't say you're welcome ever in my life because okay. I just think it's redundant. Okay. When I hold the door for somebody and they don't say thank you, I say, well, you're welcome. And I just walk. I don't even wait for the reaction. So, so had I waited ridiculous. for the had I waited for the reaction, I would agree with it. That that's been, but no, I'm just I'm just nailing them out there because they have no recourse. They can't apologize because I'm already moved on. <laughs> what are they going to say? They're shamed publicly oh. the way it should be. So you just do it to shame people. The people who deserve it will get shamed. The people who say thank you, they're good like the rest of us. Did you ever think about this? The concept of grace, where you actually yeah. do a good. I leave deed. that to better people than me. Well, like me, you do a good <laughs> deed Boy. without expecting something in return. So if I hold the door for you, right? And you come through, and you don't say anything in return. I don't care. If holding the door, imagine that, is a good deed. Yeah. We've lowered the bar on good deed. Well, what is holding it then? the door? What is it? Holding the door is functional. It's the flow of traffic of people in and out of a building. But, but or it's space. not your job. You're not. You're not obligated to to be functional. You're obligated to move from point A to point B. That's your. That's what you're trying to right. do, right? Right. Okay. So what you listen? Yeah, everybody's moving in and out. So, if, especially if somebody needs to hold the door. Now, here are the people who, who needs to hold the door. Who needs help holding the door? Again, if there's a, if there's an if there's an eighty five year old woman with a walker, I'll go out of my way to jump up, open that door, and they always say, "Oh, thank you." But what if they don't? You're going to be like, "Oh, she's rude." I'd be like, "No, I'll still say you're welcome." You're welcome. Because why are they so old? They're so grumpy they can't say thank you. So you just want to the generation one up that judges people. us. You just want to one up people. You, you know want why? to exert no, your in that power moment, over them. Right? I am morally superior in that moment. Oh, there it is. At least you admit it. You admit your foolishness. Okay. Right. Let me tell you, know, you what's foolish. You know what's foolish? And a foolish extension of this. The people who have you ever been walking, like uh, say, into uh, into into the RMV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're going through a, a big glass door, and someone is a good ten yards, fifteen yards ahead of you. 
And they walk ahead of you, and they're sort of coming from an oblique angle. So they see you. They open the door, and they stand there. So now you either have to run to say, oh, thank you for holding the door to cover that distance. It's too far for a handhold. That, there's a certain distance outside of the, dia- uh, of the radius. You don't need to hold for somebody. Unbelievable. And I stick to that. I've let doors slam in people's faces because they thought I was going to sit there and hold the door for them when they were 30 feet away, and they get to it just as it closes. And you know what? Lesson learned. You have to learn the rules of protocol. Oh, really? Yeah, so there you have it, folks. Like I keep no, saying, no, there, exactly. this guy there is you a have heel. It. Okay? He is just it's realistic. completely just... It's realistic. Tougher than get a two-dollar snake. Yeah, yeah, well, you show. know, I listen. Before I slam the door in For you. the record... If you're if you're doing things with the expectation that somebody's going to say thank you because you need a pat on the head, no. oh good job, it's pal, not a pat on the head. When you need all that nonsense, it's what then this, you're not being pure. It's what the Your society stink. It's what the society is facing right now. What's that? The utter and total breakdown of social communication because everybody thinks that their voice and their opinion is the most important, and what they're doing through their day is the most important. That they walk through doors like robots. They don't interact with the people around them. And I'm not going to blame technology. Oh, you They've shouldn't talk been to that. strangers, all right? You shouldn't talk to strangers. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. I talk to you. We're pretty strange. <laughs> Every week I'm stuck here talking to you. Oh, my God. All right. Well, this is a wrestling show, so let's get back to, to wrestling here. You, all your common car- courtesy crap. We have more of your listener-submitted questions, a.k.a. Ask Duke. Yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah, I'm telling you. Listen, we have a special guest, the Maverick, Moonshine Mantel. He's coming on for an exciting interview today. All that, plus we're going to run the ropes. But before we get to any of that, I want to thank you. That's right, you, the loyal listeners of Duke Loves Wrestling. Thanks for tuning in on iTunes and all the other podcast apps. Thanks for sending me messages on Twitter and Facebook at Duke Loves Wrestling, although you sometimes you agree with the Boston Bad Boy, which I really don't appreciate, by the way. That's your opinion because I'm working with fact. So. Oh, please. Quick reminder, Bigly. all of our shows are archived on YouTube, so everything from episode one to this current episode you can listen to there. Keep sending in your tweets. Keep subscribing. We'll keep delivering the best podcasts you listen to. Jack. It's time to run the ropes. I give my opinion on the top five stories in the world of professional wrestling. Let's go. Okada retains at Wrestle Kingdom 11. That's right, folks. According to WrestlingInc.com, Okada battled Kenny Omega. Listen to this. To a 47-minute gem of a match. But in the end, he retained the IWGP Heavyweight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom 11. I mean, all over social media, the wrestlers were commenting they stayed up late. Because keep in mind, here in America, you know, depending on where you're at, like here on the East Coast, I believe we're about 12 hours behind our friends over in uh, Japan there. But they stayed up and they watched New Japan Pro Wrestling's version of WrestleMania, which was broadcasted there. Uh, What will happen with Kenny Omega now that he was able to come so close, but yet he wasn't able to retain or even gain the IWGP Heavyweight Championship? And what's going to happen with Okada? Is he going to stick with New Japan Pro Wrestling? Because there's really not anything else for him to gain there. We'll have to wait and see. Stay tuned. Alberto Del Rio gives Paige a new ring. Yes, folks, according to the former WWE Divas champion, Paige, she posted this on her Instagram, by the way, her fiance, Alberto Del Rio, gave her a huge, a huge rock to celebrate their engagement. Huge. Remember, folks, toward the end of 2016, Paige p- proposed to Alberto herself. She did it in the middle of a ring. So now this guy had to return the favor and he got her her own ring. (laughs) Imagine that. What will happen with this whirlwind relationship between the two of them? I don't know, but I'm going to keep on watching. Listen, there's... What she did was like when the guy proposes at Fenway Park yep. or at the at the garden and up on the big screen. In front of everybody. It's an a-hole move. Oh, stop it. I don't what? care. I don't care what a sex you a man proposing a woman, woman it's bogus because what it is is pressure. That's somebody who's not sure if the other person's gonna say yes, and they figure, wow, if they're on the big screen, they're definitely not gonna say no. Or they're definitely yeah, they're, they're gonna say yes and make me look great. It's all totally self-fulfilling you are so it's not about the, it's not about it's not about the other person it's Just about ridiculous. her doing that i think what he did was probably a much more classy move ring the bell murder charges dropped against superfly jimmy snooker 
Yeah, according to CNN, charges were officially dropped against the former WWE superstar Superfly Jimmy Snooker. And keep in mind, you have that murder charge that dated all the way back to the 70s. Why were the charges dropped? Because the judge ruled Snooker was unfit to stand trial as a result of his dementia. Now, look, this is an interesting turn of events, folks, because in many ways it's unfortunate. Snooker deserves his day in court, and the family of the victim deserves the opportunity to have this case prosecuted. I agree with you, uh, and I just wanted to chime in on that by saying... Uh, nothing better than if you have a 35, 40 year old murder charge to fake going senile. Uh, if you're <laughs> smart enough to do that, yeah. uh, if you're smart enough to have a career, you know, uh, and do all well. Secondly, this was in the seventies. Mm -hmm. How did he have a career? How did, how did your buddy Vince, uh, allow oh, him no. to work with a pending mur? This wasn't like, you know, uh, drunken driving or something. Not to say that, that we can put a price on any of that, but murder is pretty heavy. Well, so tell me how that worked. I'll out. say this. According to Snooker's book, mm -hmm. which he was so foolish, he put stuff in his book, which allowed this new trial to open right. up, by the way, because it was new evidence. According to his book, all he remembers is Vince McMahon had a briefcase, walked in the room, did all the talking, and suddenly the police didn't pursue any charges against him. That sounds time. about in line with the rest of the bad backroom shenanigans, oh my like God. the handshake deals That's and everything his else. word, but Vince McMahon has never said that happened, so Why I'm going to stick with Vince McMahon himself. on this one. You stop the it The last right thing now. I want to say is to your point of... Uh, deserves a trial the victims especially uh, when somebody pleads insanity in a murder case they still have a trial true so i don't, I don't know how this is any different well you have so, to be fit to stand trial those, those are what does that the, mean that's you have the to law. be able to sit there well you have to participate you have to have all of your faculties and yeah, someone in who's life. clinically insane is not doesn't have their faculty they have their faculties i, I don't know how that maybe it's just a legal definition i'm not clear the man on, doesn't know anything yeah, about what's going on neither would on. i well yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly when, you when they find, yeah. forget when they yeah. find you in the desert somewhere i'm gonna say i, I don't what, even know what do i know yeah i never even know. met him uh, what are you talking about bell, you uh, guys uh, where am i yeah <laughs> smackdown defeats raw in the ratings yeah, i'm sure the boston bad boy is gonna love this which, which hour the 85th hour of raw or yeah, like the whole program mind. just stop it according to wwe.com smackdown live officially defeated raw in tv viewership for the first time since the brand split from day one, we have documented how SmackDown has been the better of the two shows, and it's clear to fans across the world they're feeling the same way, okay? WWE will have to pull out all the stops to prevent their shift in viewership to continue, especially considering Raw is a full hour longer than SmackDown. Huh. <laughs> Boston bad boy, he's just shaking his head right now, folks. If you could well, see him now. What can I say? People are tiring. We, we, we live in... so. I've worked in media for a long time, and what's happening is attention spans are getting smaller. True. Right? I mean, True. the two-minute blip or whatever, the uh, TMZ style of, of reporting, you name it. Um, the, the Ryan Seacrest style of radio where he comes in for 30 seconds and he talks to a celebrity in and for out. 30 yep. and So tell me where they have the balls to put three hours in one sitting. Now, they have all the capability to, and which I think would be smarter, and I can't believe I'm giving them this idea. Uh -oh. Why don't they show the first hour and a half? And then tease and slowly release the rest of it. I don't even know what that means. On the platform. What are you talking about? So, so for Raw, three hours long, right? They, they air the first hour as normal, yep. or hour and a half. Then they cliffhanger it. And if you want to see the rest of it, and they have to, this has to be good writing too, which I think they're suffering with, parse it out over the rest of the week, the other hour and a half. They're getting paid by USA. Yeah to do the three hours because the advertising dollars are, are rolling in big time. Well, not as big as they used okay. to be, apparently, according well, to the ratings. Well, no, the advertising dollars are still there. Again, if you're in a position where you're being leveraged by USA Network, yeah. I, don't tell me that's the best business deal in the world. Oh, stop it. <laughs> TNA Wrestling officially sold. That's right, folks. According to SportsIllustrated.com, TNA Wrestling has officially been taken over by Anthem Sports, a.k.a. the owners of the Fight Network. This means Dixie Carter has been kicked to the curb. That's right. Where will this leave TNA in the new year? Will WWE finally have real competition? I got to tell you, I sure hope so. Will this prevent Billy Corgan from ever singing the national anthem again? I hope so. This guy. Maybe one good thing will come out of it. <laughs> You've, You've heard what I think. What do you think? Head over to Facebook. Head over to Twitter. T type in Duke Loves Wrestling. Do you think I'm a jerk? Do you agree with me? Maybe something in between? Let me know. Up next, we have him, Moonshine Mantel.
This is Scoot Andrews, the Black Nature Boy, and you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. Folks, every now and then, there is a talent who comes along that really turns some heads and creates a certain buzz on the indie scene. I can think of nobody who's been able to do so in such a short period of time than our guest this week. This is this is a good one here. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the Blue Chipper, one of the hottest indie wrestlers on the scene today. We're talking about the Maverick, Moonshine Mantel. How are you, Moonshine? Hey, that was a great introduction. Thank you so much for that. I mean, you just did a great job. You you knocked it right out of the park. But I'm doing great, man. How are you? How oh, very well, very well. Listen, you know, it, it's it's kind of interesting because everywhere I go, everyone I talk to, they always say, "Hey, you got to get that moonshine on there. You got to get the Maverick Moonshine Mantel on your show." And it's like, "Oh, why? Well, this guy is he's next, man. He's next." I mean, literally everyone keeps talking about you. What is it about the Maverick Moonshine Mantel that has everyone buzzing in the wrestling industry? Um, you know what? I think it's because, you know, I'm real when I come out there, man. You know, I'm, I'm a grown-ass man. You know, I'm not, I'm not a 170-pound guy out there, you know, looking to play fight with, you know, my best friends. You know, I'm, I'm out there to fight. I'm out there to be real. I'm out there to be vicious. I'm out there to be the best. So I think that uh, that reflects in everything I do, and I think that's kind of you know one of the reasons uh, maybe I've come along so quickly. Wow, wow, that's interesting. Now you were trained by uh, the trainer of champions, Mr. Rudy Boy Gonzalez, right? Yep, that was my original trainer. Tell tell the truth, Rudy. Rudy slapped you around and 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 made a man out of you, and and you know because I know a lot of guys they run away crying and what have you. Have have you quit a couple times on Rudy, or were you able to hack it out? No, man. I you know I got through it. Uh, it was definitely you know one of the hardest things I've ever had to go, go through in my life as far as uh, phys- physical training. Um, a lot of guys, you know, when I started there there were maybe a handful of guys, you know, trained with Rudy. And I started there with, you know, this this kid, and he, he made it through one day, and then he never came back. And that seemed to be like the, the you know, the pattern after a while, you know, all these new guys that come in, and, you know, they last a couple of days, or maybe they last a week, or maybe last a month. But soon, you know, more and more to keep dropping, you know. So uh, it's very, very tough. I don't think, every, you know, people out there realize the kind of um, – kind of you know i guess beating your body goes through you know especially in those first few months i remember you know every day just getting out of uh getting out of bed and you, you just having to hop in the shower and loosen up the muscles just to just to get your day started so it's it's really rough wow now you know you have people from all over the world uh who go to the texas wrestling academy to train with the the trainer of champions rudy boy gonzalez what's a typical day like especially for somebody who's just starting off in the business. What's a typical day like at, at the Texas Wrestling Academy? Um, our day would consist of, before we even get in the ring, you know, we're knocking out, you know, a couple hundred squats, a couple hundred push-ups, um, you know, a couple hundred, uh, you know, sit-ups and everything like that. You know, then we get in the ring and we go through our warm-up drills, you know, with the rolls and the running the ropes and everything like that. And then um, from there, you know, we'll break it up even more and, you know, we'll run even more drills, but run partner drills and that kind of stuff. And then, you know, we might break for a little while and then, you know, we'll get in there and, you know, we'll have our matches and we'll square up. You know, training usually lasts anywhere from about two and a half to three hours. And, uh, you know, I mean, if if you weren't in the ring, because we did only have one ring, um, you know, you were on the outside just paying attention and, you know, either – either trying to identify mistakes or trying to learn from other people's mistakes and, you know, just trying to think it, uh, you know, soak it up all in like a sponge, man. At least that's, that's what I did. Wow. Wow. Now you actually have had some interesting opportunities for a guy who's only been in the business a few years here. Uh, did I hear this right? That you, you appeared on WWE TV a few times as maybe an extra. Um, yeah. Earlier this year, uh, back in August, I was I was on WWE TV. I was on SmackDown as an extra. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now come on, you gotta you gotta let us know the inside scoop here, brother. This is exclusive business we're talking about. What was it like when you first walked into that locker room and the place that's the number one company in the world, the place that you grew up watching? What was it like walking in there? Um, it's kind of, it's it's overwhelming, but. 
you know, after the couple of days of doing the extra talent work and everything like that, it just, for me at least, it solidified in the back of my head, like, hey, this is where I want to be. You know, this is this is why I'm busting my ass so hard on the indies and, you know, getting out there and making all the trips and everything like that because I ultimately want to be here, you know, because this, this is this is where the top dogs are. You know? mm. And, uh, you know, it just it, it reassured me that, you know, WWE is where I want to be someday. Wow. Wow. Now, you have a, a big match coming up for Steve Do It To It Cox new promotion, Crowbar Championship Wrestling. You know, that's coming up, folks, uh, this upcoming Saturday, January 7th. Talk to us about that card coming up. Um, it's featuring a lot of big names. We got uh, myself on there. We got Alexander Hammerstone coming in. Uh, we got the reinforcer, Andrew Anderson, Andy Anderson uh, from up north. We got Rodney Mack, the Red Dog. He'll be in the house. We got the lion here from Texas. Uh, we got Houston Carson be there. Hey, don't forget the love machine Chaz making his his return oh, to the yeah. ring there. Come on. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's right. Chaz will be there too. Wow. Now, have you spent some time with uh, Steve Cox yet? Because he's a big fan and, and a friend of the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've worked. Uh, I've worked doing two promotions before in the past. Tell us a good Steve Cox story. Come on, I know because you know Steve. He's wild, man. That that dude awesome. is. <laughs> stories but um at least that i've been a part of but i will go ahead and just uh, reaffirm what you just said you know and he is wild when he's in the back you know he he's he's out there trying to get everyone pumped up everyone psyched you know it's almost like you're in a football locker room because you know the coach is trying to get everyone you know pumped up for their match and you know he's, he's all up in everyone's face uh and i like that kind of energy it sucks me out so you know if I knew any good Steve Cox stories, I'd keep my mouth shut, too. I'm too afraid of that guy. I know that he's coming after Duke. If he's coming after anyone, I'm, I'm pretty innocent in this, but I would keep my mouth shut. Listen, Steve Cox has two new hips, and he's already back in the gym working out. You know why? And From all that happen. ass kicking. That's right. It wears them hips, hips out. Listen, man, and, and he was a pro football player, so he's no joke. Now, yeah. Moonshine, seriously, you're a guy that everyone keeps talking about. What is it about Moonshine Mantel? Beyond the fact that you know, you know, you said that you're 100 percent real and what have you. But when a, a fan shows up at a live event, what are they going to get when they see Moonshine Mantel step in that squared circle? Uh, intensity, uh, ferociousness, just a fight, man. You know, if I had to, if if there's one person who I copied my style after, you know, growing up, it's it's Chris Benoit, you know, and. Um, I use what I learned from him and what I've learned from others, you know, in the few years that I've been doing this. And, um, you know, when I'm in that ring, it's just viciousness. Just go all out. You wow. Know, and just try to wear your opponent down. You know, don't take any, you know, don't take time off. Just stay on them, you know. Mm. And, uh, and, w and what's what's in the jug? Because I know sometimes you carry that, that, that jug to the ring there. Is there any moonshine in that jug? Absolutely. Are you kidding? That's what <laughs> me up, man. <laughs> Like I've had really bad allergies, so I mean, before matches and stuff like that, you I will sip on that just to kind of open me up, get me ready, so that way I don't go out there and I can't breathe. Oh boy! I will say the one thing about living up north is we do we don't have a moonshine culture here. No, and that's probably the worst thing that we have to deal with, which is they've made moonshine up here in sort of into like some hipster uh, cottage industry, and I I want moonshine made illegally. In some shed somewhere, and in, 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 I want it in that that jug with the three X's. That's on what it. he carries. Yeah. Now. yeah. So I want. Uh, please send us some. I think that's probably legal, right? Well, you, you might go yeah. blind because you whatever. Know, it's worth the risk. Yeah. Well, I need hey. something to loosen up. Now, listen. Speaking of loosening up, I I, I got to ask you a very important question here. The Maverick Moonshine Mantel. There is a guy on the wrestling scene right now who is a hundred percent. He's a punk. I don't like him. I wish he would get out of this business and get out of my life. I'm talking about that no good punk Roman Reigns. Now, now, come on. You're a reasonable guy talking to you, and, and you're no nonsense. Please tell me you agree that Roman Reigns is the worst thing to ever happen to this business. Whew. Man, you don't pull anything back, huh? He's a punk. I'm telling you. Um. Well, I'm, you know what, I know we're on your show and everything like that, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and have to, you know, um, 
I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. Man. Thank you. I've, I've, I've met Roman a few times. He's a very he's a very nice guy. Very nice. Very pleasant to be around. Um, I had a, you know, I've actually like sat around and had like a good five, ten minute conversation with him whenever I was doing the extra work and everything like that. And, you know, I think he gets a bad rap. You know, you, the man can't help what he's being fed, you know, if you know what I'm saying. So he's doing the best he can. And I, you know, I don't know where all this animosity comes from. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you where it comes from on Duke's end. Pure jealousy. That's oh, all it is. Come on, give me a break. He's jealous, and he wished he had such a good gimmick. No, That's all. No, let me. You know what? And thank you for agreeing with me. Yet another guest, by the Please. way, keeping that agrees with me that you're wrong on you, almost everything. You must be paying them off. You're you're probably paying for the moonshine. Listen, you know, I, I didn't I didn't bring you on the on the show to to agree with the Boston bad boy here. So this we're we're already going down the wrong path. And you know something? Now that I listen to you uh, say what you just said about Roman Reigns and how you are basically vouching for the guy. I understand now how you lost the Texas championship to our friend Rudy Russo. Okay. So, so moonshine, you want to talk about the fact that Rudy Russo wiped the, the whole arena with your face and beat you for the Texas championship. Dude, do I want to talk about that, man? Um, you know what? I think you just kind of laid it out there. Uh, so I guess I will talk about it. That's right. First of all, I know for a fact that you weren't there. You weren't in the arena. You didn't see what happened. And if you were there, you would see that, you know, there were a little few things that happened in the match that were outside of my control. Oh, please. Come on. So Rudy Russo sure as heck didn't wipe my ass all over the floor. He didn't, you know, take me from pillar to pillar and beat me up like you're saying so. You know, it was a hard-fought victory for Rudy Russo, but I promise you this, he's lucky. He's lucky. He should be waking up every single morning and thanking the good Lord above that I'm going to Kansas City and I'm going to be gone for a little while. He is lucky because I would take him out so quick i would embarrass him in front of all those rusaholics and i hope you would be there too because i would do it right in front of you with a huge smile on my face <laughs> whoa whoa hey hey whoa come on now listen i love it i listen i'm gonna tell you right now i am not a, a wrestler i and listen i got a good lawyer i'll sue okay i just want to put that out there Don king over here yeah I, i'm telling you right can you believe this guy threatening me on the show good. more you know, people should no this is un, unacceptable listen i i know rudy russo I'll, I'll send him to kansas city to come chasing after you jack i mean this, this is crazy i can't believe this after if you put rudy russo on the first flight to kansas city to come meet me because i will meet him at the airport oh man this is this is unbelievable now listen what are you going to kansas city for are, are, are you getting out of the business because rudy russo beat you or what, what's really going on here no 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 i'm going to kansas city because i'm a part of a new organization i'm actually going to st louis but i'm going to be relocating to kansas city i'm with a new organization called nwl national wrestling league whoa you heard an exclusive here, folks. The Maverick Moonshine Mantel just announced that he is joining the NWL, one of the, the most talked about new promotions hitting the scene. Wow, this is this is huge. Okay. Well, I, I guess you must be uh, in high demand if that's the case, huh? Hey, man, I, I guess so, man. They reached out to me, uh, you know, probably about this last November, and, uh, you know, I did a lot of thinking about it. And a lot of praying about it, and uh, just you know, with everything, I mean, the cards just laid out right, man. I mean, basically, it was the best, it was the best opportunity for me. So I'm very excited to be a part of NWL. I'm very excited to, you know, make this move and uh, take the next step in my career. Hmm. Now, if if fans want to get in touch with you, you know, if they if they want to ask you how you're doing out there in the new promotion, or if they want to ask you if you're you're still ducking Rudy Russo, how can they reach you <laughs> online there? All right. Well, y'all better not be contacting me asking me if I'm ducking Rudy Russo because then we'll, you know, we'll all just have a whole bunch of problems. Uh -oh. uh, on Twitter, you can get me at Maverick NWL, and on Facebook, if you look me up, uh, you can go to my fan page. It's either going to be under uh, Maverick NWL, or you could also look me up under Moonshine Mantel or Moonshine Ryan Mantel. I promise you'll get something. Wow. And also on Instagram at Maverick NWL at Moonshine Mantel. Now, before we let you go, if you could point folks in the direction of, of one match that they can look up online to see, what is up with this, this guy, the Maverick Moonshine Mantel? 
What would be one match that would be uh, representative of what you do in the ring? Not the Rudy Russo match. Yeah, well, obviously not the Rudy Russo match. Oh, that's the match I'm going to watch. Yeah, uh, probably the street fight um, for main event pro wrestling between myself and uh, Carson. Oh, okay, okay. And that that was a folks as we like to say that was a Pier Six brawl. I, I remember that match. That was a tough one there, and that went a little while too. You guys just beat the stuffing out of each other. Yeah, that was a good uh, twenty minute fight we had. Wow. Well, listen, Maverick Moonshine Mantel. You're a good guy. You're you're a very uh, hot commodity on the wrestling scene right now. I'm a little disappointed in you that that you stuck up for that punk Roman Reigns, I'll but get over it. but I'm afraid of you, so I'm not going to say too much because I'm pretty sure you can beat me up. Guaranteed. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, give Roman a chance. I promise, if you you know if you meet him in person and you'll just see how big the man is. I mean, maybe maybe you, you might find some good in him. Yeah, you guys should go out for like a nice like a slice of pizza or oh, something. Please. Sit down. Please. Yeah. And have a beer. I'm not yeah. hanging out with Roman yeah. Reigns so he can get all the women and do, everyone's looking at me like I'm nobody. Here. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. They'll, they'll probably think of his butler or something. Give me a break. <laughs> I'm just saying people give Roman a chance. Oh, stop it. Listen, his name is the Maverick Moonshine Mantel. You can look him up online. You can catch him in NWL. Moonshine, we're going to have you back sometime, too, to uh, check in on you, all right? Please do. Thank you. Take care, brother. Wow, that's why I like some energy. Yeah, he's he's something else, man. I, although, you know what? I don't know about him threatening me, though. I, oh, I loved it. That was yeah. the best part for me, and I'm sure the listeners. Please let us know if you enjoyed that as much as I did. Yeah, let us know if you appreciate this this no good uh, moonshine mantel, aka the Maverick. Uh, and let us know if you have uh, the phone number of your most hated nemesis, because I would love to have him on the show and actually beat you up live on on mic. Roman Reigns. Yeah, I can run faster than you. Just remember that. Keep okay. saying it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, listen. Up next, we have more of your listener-submitted questions, a.k.a. Ask Duke. But before we get to any of that, I want to remind you to head over to Barnyard Cheese. That's right, Barnyard Cheese over at 149 Avenue C between 9th and 10th Streets in New York City. You know, Boston Bad Boy, mm -hmm. we're going to start the new year off right. Don't give me anything too healthy, though. Oh, no, I know. I, see, I thought about throwing in a sandwich, but you know what? Instead, I'm going to go with one of the tastiest sandwiches on the menu. Mm -hmm. Okay? Listen to this. The Vince Mola. All right. Check out these ingredients. Slow roasted pork. Mm -hmm. Crunchy broccoli rab. Sharp provolone. All right. And this is all on a chewy ciabatta. Wow. Are you kidding me? I like that. Isn't that good? I like that. Yeah, you add provolone to anything, yeah. and you're already up 10%, 20%. Well, dude, when you do the slow-roasted pork... Well, yeah, you're starting, you're starting on a win. sweet and savory and that. just delicious. Oh, my goodness. Vince probably has medals other... You know, they named this sandwich after him. He probably has medals around the country for great things that hey, he's done. You never know. Good. So stop depriving yourself of deliciousness. Visit BarnyardCheese.com for more info. Enjoy. This is Dusty Wolf, and I invite all you wrestling fans to join me over here on Duke Loves Wrestling. Man, it's so good to hear Dusty Wolf's voice in that, uh, oh, yeah. that bumper there. You know, shout out to our friend Dusty Wolf and his wife Brandy. Happy New Year to you. Hope all is well. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, you like to call him out on social media to come in and reinforce your ideals. And he does bring a, a voice of old school ass kicking reason. He really does. To some of these people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. Well, you know, I got a big. He's the professor, after all. I got a big shout out. First of all, we both got a big shout out for last week's show and, and really? that, that strongly worded debate that we had about sure. uh, everything. And, and, you know, a lot of the old timers, they appreciated the fact that I talked about how my friends, mm -hmm. them, are having a hard time because they've been beat up. Yeah. But yet they still manage to get their health care situation straightened up. But they, I'm sure they don't appreciate you sticking up for the company that screwed them. Well, so that's I'm where sure they it's a sided with you on yeah, that. Well, so, again. you know, they and agreed isn't with that both the, of isn't us. that the bigger, more important They issue. agreed with both of us. So stop patting yourself on the back, wise guy. I don't know. On the list of who's getting their ass kicked because of interviews on the show, <laughs> you're like 10 to 1. Yeah, right. <laughs> So I'll go with that. What do you got for Ask Duke? Well, you know what? I was thinking about Ask Duke, and, you know, the listeners, they better up the ante here a little bit. Uh -oh. I need better questions, and I need questions from people with real names. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. I say it every week. <sighs> and, you know, I've, I've drawn the line because you want to talk about earlier in the show, you want to talk about polite? Mm. I'm going to give you something polite. Here. This is polite. This is, what I think of, this is what I think of the questions. Okay? Should I say thank you? Because I'm not going to. No. You need to say, <laughs> yeah, you need to thank me. Yeah, right. Because what I'm going to give you, other than these questions... 
is some real con- content and, and stuff that I know is on real people's minds. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Not uh, Loopy Parrot 72 or whoever is sending us these crazy questions. Listen, just it's a new year, right? So yeah. do us all a new favor. New year, new me. And you know what? Don't I'm go not too even far. pretending that I care what you think about me taking this segment. Of the oh, show my over. Buddha. Here we go. All right. So <clears throat> you're going to like this one. I did, a little, I did a little research on this. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> See, new year, <laughs> new me. So uh, the American dream. Dusty Rhodes. God rest his soul. Rest in peace. Uh, no longer with us. And uh, his children are involved in wrestling. Mm-hmm. I, I like to give a little background. Anybody who's sort of a casual fan, uh, because I, I, I tend to lean a bit more casual than you. Oh, are you going to be the wrestling expert now? Listen no, no, guy. no. I'm just going to... You go full geek. I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to make this accessible, and nice. so so he's a guy. Uh, Dusty's a guy from way back, way back, and was this tough guy, big dude. Yep. And uh, battles with Ric Flair, all that. Yeah, exactly. So when he comes, when WWE or WWF is uh, formed, they put him in this. You got to look it up. This ridiculous polka dot jumpsuit. Oh boy. There was some back room that I'm sure you know, uh, wrangling that went on, and they ended up making a mockery of this guy by putting him in a black and yellow polka dot jump. I, it wasn't that not. bad. It wasn't that bad. It's ridiculous. All right. It's well, ridiculous. He went along with it. And he made a lot of money. Okay. We'll get into how he was screwed probably by Vince McMahon and locked into a contract in a little bit. We're oh, going to tie Lord. into this. That's actually a nice little segue into what oh, I'm talking Lord. about. Oh, Lord. Here we go. So he played along with it. And you know what he did? He was smart enough to make the best of it. And he still went down as a legend. Okay. So he's got kids involved in wrestling. So his son, Cody, who has left the WWE to forge his career somewhere else because... He wasn't happy with what they were doing to and him. And I'm not happy with him for that, by the way. But, of course you're not, because you yeah. take the man's side, and you know what? You don't want anybody to think for themselves and be able to, to, to cut a, a hole for themselves. So Vince saw that they were able to twist the arm of the old man. They are gonna try. And, they tried to twist his arm, and he said, you know what? I'm out. And luckily for him, he was able to get out. He's not locked into one of these uh, emasculating contracts that some of these Jesus. other male wrestlers have put in. Yes. So he played Stardust, yep. which was a good gimmick. Okay, and so his other son is still with the, the company, and then the the the, the gold dust or the stardust, uh, was kind of a, I don't know I didn't like that. It was weird. It was a weird gimmick. Yeah. Uh, conversely, uh, gold dust was a great gimmick, uh, especially back in the day. I thought it was the funniest thing because at the time we were young, we were you know uh, adolescents, and here's this guy doing a whole you know uh, sort of uh, fay routine. Yeah. You know, he's doing Liberace. And it was movies. He would always bring up movies. movies yeah, there was this and, whole, you know, like, yeah. glam... He was like he was like Sunset Boulevard. Yep. He was this sort of Bingo. glamorous, faded star. And it was just over the top. And as a kid, I knew what was going on, but I thought it was funny that they walked the line with it and they weren't offensive with it. And he still is Goldust, correct? He's still Goldust. Yeah. I mean, still the gimmicks... Still with the company. The gimmicks changed a little bit, but... Um, so there's a segment, there's a backstage segment this week, and Bailey comes out, Uh-oh. and she's talking to... Gold Dust and his partner. Our truth, yeah. Our truth. And she's, she, you know, she has this glint in her eye, but we'll, we can get into that after. But she, she gives uh, Gold Dust a, a stuffed teddy bear that is dressed like his dad, dressed as Dusty. Which was really cute, by the way. Yeah, it's made up to look like his dad. And she says with this, she sets him up. She says with this, uh, your dad trained me. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am without him. Uh, and I just wanted to give you this little thing, as in, you know, I was thinking of him, and he's, t- you know, just standing in the hallway doing their thing, and, and it's kind of a, you know, a soft moment, but a real moment. Where are you going with this? Well, not ten seconds after she walks out of frame, in comes Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Hey, 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 don't talk about Anderson and Gallows like that, okay? Well, Let's not go there. They, they look like it. They oh, look like it. Oh, boy. I mean, how, how, it's like Mr. Clean. And his idiot brother. Oh, they Jesus. come walking in. Carl Anderson, I do not sanction this. It does, well, it's great because I don't care because I'm on the microphone right now. So these two numbskulls come walking over and they say, oh, what's that? What's that? And Goldust says, oh, he tells him what it is. It's made to look my dad. Now, they say, oh, let me see it. And, and, and his partner knows that something's up here. Goldust may be too nice of a guy. So one of the Goons. Anderson. I don't remember which one. They, they all look the same to me. Oh, Jesus. Anderson takes it, he's holding it, and he rips the head off and then runs away. So what? So what? I would say so what too. I think it's a pretty innocuous kind of a kind of a bottom of the barrel gag. Oh boy. However, if I didn't know the if we didn't know what we know already about how the company, and Vince McMahon in particular, has treated that family. 
Here's where he keeps going wrong. You're not doing this. He keeps going wrong by getting people locked in to whatever deal, maybe a handshake deal, like your other buddy, last week, Mankind, a handshake deal. He gets them into a deal. They're locked in and then he humiliates them. It, it really is Trump. It really is a Trump train of mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you kneel and I'm going to humiliate you even more. I can't believe this. So they set this guy up. Whether he knew that this uh, setup was happening or not. You know, how, how far along in the script he was, he was along, if they threw it at him as a surprise to get a real reaction, doesn't matter. Because he's stuck. And he has to sit there and have his family name tarnished and crapped on on live television once again. Not only was it bad enough that they tried to humiliate and embarrass his father, who luckily was able to rise above, his brother couldn't take where they put him, they tried to screw him over. He's still there going out, taking the hits, and they just want to F with him. Tell me now that you're going to defend that reprehensible behavior. I can't believe you took a pro wrestling storyline and you spun this just over the top no, there's ridiculous no, tale right now. Behind okay? every behind every storyline, yeah, uh, there is a there is wheels in action. There are gears rotating in the W. You know it. You've seen it before. And I've I've called you on it before. I've called you on it with Daniel Bryan. Oh, uh, they they set him up. They locked him in. They set him up. And they started calling him impotent on national television. All right, all right. that's enough of that. Let's Sasha Banks, oh, your girlfriend. You're not going to. They keep swip, flip flopping with her. All right, just to keep her dangling on the line. Listen, let's let's stay focused here. First and foremost, it was a pro wrestling storyline. Okay, if Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, if he was still walking this this earth, I'm sure he would be elated that the number one company in the world continues to not only employ his son, Dustin, who, by the way, can you imagine if this poor guy had to be on the indie scene right now or if he had to get a different job? I mean, all he knows is wrestling. Let me let me tell you this right now. This is not a Just fight, so you though. know. This is not a... Okay. You know, this no, is companies taking but advantage. Dusty Rhodes would appreciate the fact that all these years after he hung up the boots, he's still being mentioned on WWE television on a consistent basis. Let me tell you something else. And he's part of a storyline. It was a set up from the beginning okay. because what was the what was the doll that Bear dressed as? How what what era was the the bear in oh. the black and yellow polka dots? Okay. If well, this really was, it was a touching, a bear. if this really was someone they cared, if they wanted to give a wink and nod to the legacy oh, of a Hall of Famer who has passed on, are you kidding? They would have given him in his best era, no. not the polka dot go out there and dance jester era. Listen, and I want to know where it stops. I want to know where you think it stops. So there's all these little snide inside things. They want to pin a guy down. They want to bend him, right? They write it into the storyline. So nimrods like you can say, oh, it's just part of the storyline. You're reading too far into it. Where does it stop? Does it stop when somebody gets called uh, a racial slur? Does it stop when somebody gets uh, outwardly uh, sexist remarks? Is that st is that still part of the storyline? Oh boy! Where where does it? How far were they going to push? You know that? what? You take all the fun out of wrestling. Let me explain something to you. Oh, okay? it's fun. People can enjoy that. It's entertainment. Yeah, but it doesn't make okay? it right. You, do you understand? Donald that when, Trump is entertainment. Doesn't mean he's right. Oh well, he's the president elect of the United States. Oh, yeah. Do you understand that when Dusty Rhodes was a booker, okay? For WCW, for the NWA, even for Florida Championship Wrestling, he had all kinds of crazy gimmicks and things that he came up with. Satanic rituals with, with Kevin Sullivan. He had Ric Flair doing crazy stuff, getting his clothes ripped off of him. He had all kinds of crazy things going on. At one point, uh, uh, Ric Flair was making out with a mannequin. Uh, they, uh, Tully Blanchard slapped a, a, a woman who was his valet. These these are the things that Dusty Rhodes himself came up with. This is this is okay? this is it's vindictive. Pro wrestling. It's vindictive because not only is it, uh, I'm Vince. I've got you in a place where you can't get out of, and now I'm going to make you regret it. It's also starting from way back when when Dusty was working outside of the WWE and when he was NWA, and he was out there making his own way. Okay. He comes to the WWF as maybe the next logical step, and Vince says, uh, probably said, I can't quote him directly, but. I'm guessing it's something to the effect of, you're coming here now, you're going to come, you're going to waltz in, I'm going to make you pay. And not only that, uh, 30 years later, I'm going to make your kids look like morons. You stop it right now. Okay. It is a, it is a, it is a controlled plan. No. It is a controlled plan from beginning to end, no. which I like to call a conspiracy. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. It's, it's ridiculous that you would even take 
the legacy of Dusty Rhodes and try to dump on top of it this nonsense that you're talking about. Okay, now look, I understand that Cody Rhodes took some exception to the to the whole storyline there with the bear getting his head ripped off. And listen, I understand, yeah, I mean, Cody, yeah, you're right. still he mourning. Went on, he went on yeah. social media and said it's, it's unbelievable, meaning, you know, if someone who's lived through the death of somebody they were very close to, to have it mocked and have the guy's career mocked and, 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 and you know, taken down a notch, he's a dead man. It's pro he wrestling. Can't just, he, I'm sure he loves the fact but that again, he's still what's, being mentioned on what's TV. The, He's dead. Okay. What's the level? You got to evoke far does his it go? spirit. You got to keep talking about the guy so he's never forgotten. This isn't like they hey. took. This isn't like they did a Tupac and they took the hologram of him and brought him out and wow, oh, isn't that cool? Give me Here a he is. Break. They they made a teddy bear look like the awful gimmick right. they strapped him right. with, and they made him do it. Let me explain something to you. Okay. Pro wrestling is about good versus evil. Okay. It's about the heels. And it's about the baby face. So when you got a dastardly heel that rips the head off of You're your wrong. dead father's uh, spirit animal there, then you know what happens in the end? The good guys eventually are going to get the comeuppance and they're going to beat the bad guys. That's the point. Here's why you're wrong. Two words. Reed Flair. That's oh why you're wrong. My God. You're he- I, listen, I want to hear you defend the WWE against what they did to your hero and his family. Stop it right now. Ex- I want No, explain it. Explain what happened. Ric Flair's youngest son, Reed. Passed away. Yeah. Charlotte. Yep. De- dedicates her entire career to the memory of Reed, who all he wanted to do was be a pro wrestler. Sure. So that's why she became a pro wrestler. Trained by dad. Trained by dad and, you know, other people and what have you. Last year, there was a questionable storyline mm-hmm. where Sasha Banks brought up Charlotte's dead brother. Mm-hmm. As a, it, in, in a sort of a. In a heel, in a negative in a way. Heel way, in a negative way, right. and, and it, it touched. It went the nerve. there. It Rick went. Fla- there. Ric Flair was very upset. Charlotte bawled her eyes out, but she did it. And did was she it, know? Was it distaste? Yeah, she knew. Was it distasteful? Possibly, but it was a heel in the realm of a storyline. This comes back. This comes back to uh, the little kid. Uh, getting made fun of in the crowd. Oh God! You, because where does the storyline end? Everything with you is. And just you're going to give a shout out to my nonsense. buddy who said who said I missed the biggest analogy here that puts your argument to bed about that. When you go to Disney World, he has kids. They went to Disney recently. When you go to Disney World and you go to the Star Wars section of Disney World, you can take your picture with Darth Vader. Now Darth Vader's in the mask and the whole bit. They tell the kids in line, "Don't talk to Darth Vader because he doesn't like when kids talk." You know, they play it up a little bit. You know, he's he's a bad guy. Don't talk to Darth Vader. Take your picture, but don't talk to him. Reason being, he's in the suit, he can't, you know, what can he do? It doesn't mean that when a little kid talks to Darth Vader, he ignites a lightsaber and cuts their head off. Why not? Huh? Did you he, ever think about that? If, if Darth Vader is doing his done. job as Why a not? heel, I'm, okay, I'm ending it here. tell your Why buddy not? he doesn't know what the heck you know, he's talking about. You know, you have your head okay? so far you, up you the WWE's You completely lost your mind with this nonsense you're talking this week. It's unbelievable. Okay.